in this very present moment. Will you bow with me for a brief word of prayer? Our Father, our God, we come to you right now, Father, just to say thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for things being as well as they are, Lord. Because we know that things could be worse, Father. And there's someone somewhere that has a hard way to do it. And Father, right now, we just come right now to say thank you, Because, Lord, we know that you can. And we know that you will, Father. Lord, I heard Grandma to say, you may not come when we want you to come, Father. But, Lord, you are always right with you. And that right there, Father, is just enough to say thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for our bishop and lady, Father. We thank you for the word that happened. Father, we pray that it would accomplish, would accomplish what you have said now to do, Father. And we give your name all the praise, all the honor for us in your son. Christ Jesus' name do we pray. Let God say. We give honor to you. This morning we say if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Because we simply know that he is present in this place this morning. We give honor to our man, God, man, woman of God, in their absence, Bishop and Lady Copeland. And to each and every one of you, I thank you all for your presence here on this morning. Now, I'd also like to give special thanks to each and every one of you that have shown any act of kindness towards me and my family during this recent time. We thank you for everything that you have done. And on behalf of all of the college students and students everywhere, all of your prayers have helped us get through what we're going through. And we ask that you will continue to pray for each and every one of us. I need somebody like him.
I once heard Pastor Gregory Pollock say, yeah. I'll act as if I'm a, as if I am a minister. Okay. Short enough to get your attention, but long enough to get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The word this morning will come from 1 Samuel All right. chapter 17. Yeah. A very familiar story that I know that each and every one of you know. Verse 7 of chapter 17. We'll begin reading at verse 32 and verse 33. Verse 7. Chapter 17. Verses 32 and 33. And it reads on this one. I'll be reading from the NIV version. David said to Saul, let no one move his heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Let's look at verse 33 once more again. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. For the time that it is ours to share together, I want to look up the thought this morning age ain't nothing but a number. Age and nothing but nothing. Some of you all mine may possibly like mine went back to May 5th, 1993, Aaliyah's diary. Age ain't nothing but a number. Growing down ain't nothing but a man. But this love that I have for you, it will never change. Age ain't nothing. But there may possibly be someone in here this morning on the sound of my weak voice that may think that you are too young. And on the contrary, there may be someone in here this morning that thinks that they are too old. But I just come to tell you this morning that age ain't nothing. But this book of 1 Samuel was possibly written by Samuel. And it also possesses writing from the prophet Nathan and man. Uh, his audience was to the people of Israel. Uh, their, their purpose of writing this book was to record the life of Samuel, who was Israel's last judge. This book records the reign and the decline of Saul, who was the first Lastly, 1 Samuel stores the choice and the preparation of David. Amen. David, who is arguably Israel's greatest king. Amen. This book of 1 Samuel has many things that the author wants us to take notice of. They are king, God's control, leadership, obedience, and God's faithfulness. Somebody shout faithfulness. Faithfulness. Here in our text today, you have a young shepherd boy by the name of David. I like David today because David, even in his youthfulness, David adapted the nature of having heart. Uh, having heart is simply boldness and toughness. This characteristic is something that you cannot buy. Uh, how many know that money cannot buy everything? <laughs> Having a heart is simply something that you just must have. Uh, I would imply the phrase here that it can't be on you, but it has to be within you. David had heart. This battle between David and Goliath is one of the longest and best known biblical stories. In the earliest stage of this battle against Israel, 
The Philistines were a cap on the south side of the valley of Elah. Elah was a few miles southwest of Jerusalem. Saul and his army were encamped on the north side of the valley. During this time, the champion from each army would fight each other to determine who would win the battle. This Philistine champion by the name of Goliath. You all know Goliath, don't you? Goliath was believed to be nine feet and nine inches tall. The record indicates that if anyone in the army would go against Goliath in battle, it would be Saul. But Saul this morning displayed something that we must not do. Saul, here in the text, chooses to not go against the, this giant, but he chooses to choose someone else. Saul was at least six feet and five inches tall, while everyone else in the army was under six feet tall. Can't you see the analogy here this morning? He also was one of the few Israelite soldiers to have bronze armor, which was similar to Goliath. Goliath's bronze armor weighed about 126 pounds. Goliath's shield was about nine feet tall, covering his entire body. Uh, looking at this giant put fear into the hearts of the people of this army. But I come to tell you this morning that when giants come in your life, you must not get fearful and scared because you know who is on your side. And I come to tell you this morning that if you have God on your side, I have no reason to fear. As King Saul's job was to go out and fight the battle of his people. But Paul, but Saul, once he encountered this Goliath, this giant Goliath, he chickened out and decided to go and find someone else that was bold enough to go against this giant. Do you know people like that in your life? When, when times get hard, they always look for the easy way out. You cannot always take the easy way out when you're going through what you're going through. Uh, you The easy route in life, it would just put you in a deeper and darker dilemma than you already were. Uh, when I'm at school, sometimes I have the spirit of doing the assignments at the last minute. And in resort of me doing the assignments at the last minute, it causes me not to get the best possible grade that I can get. But if I were to take the time and the proper preparation to do the assignment, I would get uh, the best grade that I possibly could ask. Uh, Goliath challenged Israel twice a day for 40 days straight. What y'all gonna do? Y'all know y'all can't handle me. Y'all better get your weight up. These are just some of the things that I can hear uh, coming out of the mouth of the night. But I learned that we can keep our mouth closed just for a little while. God will start talking. I think I need to say that again. If we learn to keep our mouth quiet just for a little while, God will start talking. Uh, when problems come in your life and situations seem to beat you down. I come to tell you, hang in there. God is up to something. There is a blessing while being Sometimes we would learn to just keep our mouth closed. 
close, God will start. Goliath, nor Saul, didn't know that God would send a young shepherd boy to accept his child. In life, you never know who God will send to him. This is why it is vital that we must treat everybody right and treat everybody with respect. Because sometimes the person that you may think will love, uh, God will raise them and have you answering to them. You better be careful how you treat God's woman and how you treat God's woman because the same folk you look down on, you may possibly be looking up to. And I come to tell you this morning, God, text today, Jesse, who is the father of David. Jesse is from Bethlehem. Jesse had three sons that were older than David that were already at the camp. While David was in charge of his father's sheep. Uh, due to either of the eldest three sons taking the notion to go against Goliath, is the reason why the Lord didn't choose them to be king. As I even reiterate, age ain't nothing but uh, Their father sent David to the camp to take his brothers some food, and this father wanted to know how the, the boys were doing. And while David was on camp, David heard about the challenge and how nobody was brave enough to go against each other. Uh, so David decided that he would jump in and take action. Here in the text today, it reads in verse number 32, David says to Saul, let no one lose heart account of this Philistine. Your servant will go out and fight. Which brings me to the first thing that I want to tell you this morning. Don't be afraid to take action. Don't be afraid to take action. As I told you before, David had heart. And with David having heart, he did not mind being the first to take action. Uh, when people around you seem as if they want to be content where they are, it is time for you to leave them right where they are at, and you go ahead and you take action. One reason too many people are scared to take a chance is because they are scared of failure. I once heard this quote, don't be afraid to fail, but be afraid not to try. So even if you fail one time, you get back up and dust yourself off and you try again. If you don't believe me, you look at this, the great Stacey Abrams. She did not win the governor election the first time, but I can hear her saying in my spiritual imagination, Can I get a witness this morning? David took action. Even though David took action, Saul was not impressed uh, with David. And I come to tell you this morning, everybody won't be proud of you. Everybody won't be happy for your success. So you might as well go ahead and do what the Lord has called you to do. Saul, the little David, due to his youthfulness. And I come to tell you this, this morning, don't let anyone belittle you because of your age. Uh, if they think that you are too young to start that business, you go ahead and you start that business. If they think you are too old to get that degree, you go ahead and get that degree. I come to tell you this morning, age ain't nothing. But, David kept his head on straight. Which leads me to the second thing that I want to tell you this morning. Possess a positive mindset. Possess a positive mindset. There will be times in all of our lives where we will have things said and done to us that we do 
black man. But it is important for us that we must stay focused. Don't let criticism stop you. Don't let jealousy stop you. Don't let envious people stop you. Don't let nothing stop you from doing what the Lord has called you to do. David's own brother had got angry with him out of jealousy. Now, the record indicates that David's brother was possibly upset that his little brother had more faith and courage than he. After David kept a positive mindset, he responded to adversity with confidence. Uh, the text tells us that Goliath had been a warrior since his youth. But David gives Saul Notice that Goliath is not the only one that has been victorious. Uh, while David was carrying for the sheep, a lion and a bear tried to come and take one of the sheep. David killed a lion and a bear by the grace of God. By him having the ability to kill a vicious bear and a dangerous lion, David was viewed as a ferocious and a steadfast and a courageous protector. David said some, David said that the same God that was with him when he killed the lion in the battle uh, would be the same God that would be with him against his foolishness. This 
giant by reaching in his shepherd bag. And that's something that I want to tell you this morning. I want you to get in your bag. Uh, simply by getting in your bag is simply by finding your groove back. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but there's somebody in here this morning that needs to get their groove back.
with God's money in your pocket. Amen. Will you stand? Go back and go home. Thank Bishop once again and Lady Cope for their absence. For entrusting us. Amen. Will you bow with me? Our Father, our God, Lord, we come now, Father, thank you for the service. Father, we thank you for these days of people, Lord. And Father, as we go out, Father, we pray that you will bless our going out. And Father, that you will bless our coming in, Father. And Lord, let the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that rest and abide by us, henceforth and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Peace be